How's it going guys? I'm Dustin with Hard Cruise Racing and I want to talk about how I just fixed the outer pressure foot, the pressure foot on my Conso P1206 RB1. Now, why do I need to make a video about this? Aren't there already videos online? So when we opened our custom automotive shop or more importantly when we opened our storefront because we were doing custom automotive upholstery first from our house and then we did it as a sublet company but when we actually opened our storefront i decided to take a big step and buy a new machine machines are expensive this is an industrial sewing machine designed to sew things like leathers automotive custom seats um you know canvases and all these heavy duty materials in a very very precise manner okay and this is very important if you're going to do custom automotive upholstery if i do something like diamond pleating i want my stitches to be exact precise and dead on every single time and that's where the the conso p1206 rb1 came in now the 1206 is part of their premier series okay now what's the difference between a 1206 and a 206 right we've all heard about the 206 what's the difference okay the 206 is been around forever and it's it's a powerhouse okay it's a powerhouse machine the 1206 came out as an update for the 206 okay the 1206 comes with a self-oiling feature or what i would like to call is a partial self-oiling feature you still have a lot of oiling points um, up top but you can see where in here especially there are some ropes and other you know routes where the pumps can pump oil up and they can seep into the, to the individual um, bearings or whatever you'd like to call them but there are a lot of oiling points that you're still supposed to oil every time you sit down at this machine or daily okay and they are marked in red across the top across the back you can see some of the holes in the camera right here and here and there's all over okay and i still go through and oil all of these ropes because i don't think they get wet enough in my opinion i want everything to be soaking wet because hey, I would rather my machine last longer. On top of its self-oiling features, it also comes with an electric servo. If you don't have an electric servo on your machines, I think you need to switch, okay? I put an electric servo on my Singer 111 155, which is, as any, everyone knows, the, the leather and vinyl machine from like World War I. Um, and yes, mine is that old, but I put an electric servo on that machine and it is night and day difference. I even put a cheap Amazon electric servo on that machine. I'll even post the link for that electric servo below it's a very easy install. The only thing is you need to buy a different belt. So you need to measure what belt length you need and go get one that's in the range of the adjustment of the motor. But I had an issue, okay? During COVID, we decided that we were going to shut our shop down because of the mandatory shutdown. And it just, we weren't being able to pay the bills. And the custom upholstery industry is very reliant on disposable income or the throwaway income that people have to throw their projects, right? You don't just say, let me throw a couple thousand dollars at my boat seats if you're worried about paying your bills. Okay, so we were worried about that and we decided to shut our shop down. And guess what I found out? We don't really need to have a storefront to be a good business because our customers didn't care if we had a storefront. They cared about the quality of our work. So, we already had most of our company, customers coming from online and we still do today. But here's an issue that I have with my Conso. The outer pressure foot simply stopped working. Now, it, it stopped, like completely. Like, there's nothing working on the pressure foot of my machine. Okay, and when I called back to the company where I bought the machine from, which I bought it from a company, a, a full operational industrial machine shop, they went out of business during COVID too. Um, I don't know if the guy had retired. I don't know if he passed away. I don't know the story. All I know is that I cannot get a hold of him and other upholstery shops in the area that had bought machines through him that came with warranties and other work couldn't get a hold of him either. So I went down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what I could possibly do, including printing out all of the manuals for the 1206. Guess what? Nothing. I could not get the pressure foot to the lift. And I tried to print out the manual, and I tried to look online at videos, and I tried everything imaginable to get this dang pressure foot to lift. Now, guys, I, I even went to the point of calling a shop that isn't the shop I bought it from and asking about a quote to get it fixed or to have him come up to my shop and take a look at it, and it was expensive, all right? Now, it's like an hour and a half, two-hour drive for this the shop. What he quoted me was everywhere within what he should quote me. I it's re, It was a reasonable price. It was just... With how, with how little I focus on custom upholstery right now, I didn't want to spend that. So I decided I was at least going to take a look and figure out what was going on with my machine. So I got the manual out, guys. I went on to um, the console website and I printed out the manual for the 1206. And I started going through every adjustment imaginable. And guess what? It didn't fix anything. I'm not joking. It didn't fix anything. It didn't improve my situation. I still had a pressure foot that was not working. So let's talk about what I did. 
Now I want to talk about the fact that I went through everything. Retiming the machine through the back cover. Um, I tried the whole, you know, loosen the screw and lift the, the, the um, feed foot or the center pressure foot and, or the, the walking foot, whatever the center foot, we, you want to consider the center foot. I tried everything and the outer foot just simply was not moving. So finally I lifted the outer foot up just a little bit and when I would start to move it, I would notice a little bit of lift in it. Now I already fixed it now so I can't be like, this is the example, but there was just a little bit of lift. And I got looking at what was actually lifting the foot because that's what I couldn't see before. Looking at the machine as I was cycling it, I could not tell what was the lifting action of the machine or what was actually causing the pressure foot to lift. And finally I figured it out. So one of the adjustments for the pressure foot is over here, this top screw right here, and that's how much the foot actually adjusts. Correction, this adjusts how much the center foot, or center foot would lift, and there's a screw over here on this side, an adjustment, where you can slide it up and down to adjust how much the outer foot would adjust. And of course I tried to max that out to get more lift, and uh, it, wasn't get, it still wasn't getting any lift. But then I noticed, I started tracing this between, you know, here's where the lift point was, and um, this is the arm, right? So what I noticed is when I would rotate this, I actually wasn't getting, see right here where, where it maxes out the cam, and it starts to pressure over, you see that? So that's what causes that outer lift, is that pressure over. Okay, and, I, and of course, since my machine wasn't doing that at all, I didn't even know it was supposed to be doing that. But I got to a point where I could see it going like this. Just that little bit of movement right there, okay? And so I decided I was going to just go for it, okay? I loosened this bolt up, and I loosened uh, this side, well, I loosened the side bolt, and I loosened this bolt, and I loosened this bolt. I just loosened everything up here because I figured I was better off to get the outer foot to start working than we'll worry about the inner foot. And so I got to a point to where I would say is the max lift, um, where the foot, outer foot should be lifting, the pressure foot should be lifting. At that point, I grabbed a handy dandy screwdriver, I shoved it in there so that way it would slide up, and I tightened all of those things up. At first I did it way too much, and that's okay because it at least proved where the movement was at. At first I did it way up here. It's only supposed to be about 8 millimeters of lift underneath that foot um, when you do it by hand. And, um, I mean, at that point, but also, it's only supposed to be about, you know, just above your material. You never want to have this machine adjusted so much that you have a ton of slop in it. You want the pressure foot to lift just above the material so it can slide. You want those, you know, the, the walking foot to bite just enough to pull it, but you don't want to leave marks in your material. It's a whole balancing act with one of these machines. And unfortunately, that changes material to material, so you need to be able to adjust it. So... When I loosened everything up along here, it allowed the rod to rotate, it allowed everything to move and adjust, and I tightened it at its max amount and was able to come back slowly. And finally, it fixed my issue. I finally have a machine where the outer foot actually lifts up. Um, I, I wanted to make this video because I literally chased this issue for... I would say weeks, but honestly, I wasn't putting a whole lot of focus into it, but I was chasing the issue. Okay, of course, I need to figure out what the issue is, um, but that's what it is. This right here, this Allen key, which I can tell you quickly that it's a size 5 on this here Stanley set is what fit in there. Um, I loosened up that size 5. I loosened up this screw back here, which I did end up using a wrench for because it was tight. Um, the screwdriver just wasn't, simply was not doing it, and then I loosened up the piece back here. Um, and this back here is supposed to be what controls your lift length easily, something you can crack open quick and adjust for your, each project. But I just put it in the center as like my zero and went from there. But you know, eventually I have full operation, guys. So now what I need to do, I did mess with the timing. I want to get some, some thread in here and a bobbin in here and do a test pass just to make sure everything lines up. Um, I do have a few pieces that I need to put back on. Like there is this little piece that goes he here, which doesn't do anything. I think it's just a cover um, just based off of, you know, watching the operation with it on and off. Um, but I do need to get that put back in. And then I need to get, you know, things like the covers and stuff put back on. Um, yeah, so that's how I fixed my Conso P1206RB1. It is, a pre like I said, it's part of their Premiere series. So when you do look it up, it's hard to find um, in the list, but I will post a link to the list, but it comes up under 
you know, um, Premier 1206. So when you're looking alphabetically, don't look for the 12. Look for the Premier. Um, and that's all I got for you guys today. Um, do me a favor. Subscribe to my videos if you like what I'm posting. That really helps me. Okay, now that you've watched my videos, um, YouTube's going to continue to show you my videos. But the, the subscriptions and the likes, they really help me out. Okay, so if you liked my video, if it was helpful to you, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to my content. I do um, some light industrial sewing stuff on this channel. I do a lot more automotive and racing stuff on this channel, but it's all cool stuff. I want to get back into building some cooler custom um, stuff. Yeah. Most importantly, if, you, uh, if you're awake, if you're having a day, make sure it's a good day.